welcome back to or welcome to my channel if you haven't been here before my name is Cheyenne Olsen and if you have thank you so much for watching my videos and supporting me it really does mean a lot to me this video will be the first of six in my new series true crimes of Australia and this episode and the next five to come will be centered around one of Australia's most infamous serial killers Ivan Robert Marco Millar. The cruel murders that happened at his hands and the many other crimes he committed over the years would not only shock the nation but it would shock the world as well. And unfortunately it changed how a lot of people chose to travel the world and chose to travel our country. It discouraged backpackers rightfully so and it made international headlines. These six episodes will be talking heavily about rape, gun, murder, violence, dysfunctional home and family life, robberies and mental health conditions. This is a very long and confusing case but because it was such an important part of Australian history and still is and because it changed the way people chose to travel and was a turning point to that I will include as much detail as possible and because of this I will not be age restricting these episodes. These episodes could be helpful and useful to high school and college students if they are covering this case in their classes or if they are just genuinely curious about this case. Because of this I will say now that these six episodes will still have all the gory details about the murders and they will be long videos. So it may be scary and it's definitely not for the faint of heart. I highly recommend that if you are affected or easily bothered or anything by this type of stuff um, that you click off this video now before I get into the case more. In addition to this I will have all of my sources linked down below. The link will be to um, other YouTube videos and YouTube channels and they will also be to different websites and articles as well and I will also have an Amazon link down below as well it's not an affiliate link don't worry about that um, but it is to um, so you can check out the two books that I did purchase for this series they are right here and I will talk about them more when I get towards the end of the video and I did use them a lot to help. I have tried to put this into as much of a cohesive timeline as I can but because there was so much to the case and the reign of terror that occurred Ivan Malat's hand um, and the amount of immediate attention that it got at the time there will be some mistakes and if there is please correct me on them in the comment section down below remember please be respectful I am only human I'm just doing my best and I am not an expert in any of this I'm just doing it because I'm interested in these cases now back into this episode of the case. In 1996, Ivan Malat was convicted of seven counts of murder. This ended up being seven consecutive life sentences for the seven victims that were found in the Belangelo State Forest. He was also charged with the attempted murder, false imprisonment and robbery of Paul Thomas Onion. This added 6 years onto the sentence, although some sources claim that it added 18. Most, however, claim it was only 6. But these were not the only crimes that Ivan Malat had committed over the years. He actually had a really big history of violence and had been in trouble with the police many times before. So in this episode I will be covering his childhood was well, his life up until he was 30 years old and to understand just how evil of a person Ivan Malat was we need to look at his childhood and talk about his parents and his siblings as well as the way he grew up um, and as, like I said I am going up till he was 30 years old and this was before his seven known victims were found Malat was born on Wednesday the 27th of December 1944 in Rossmore and he was one of 14 children, one of 10 brothers, he was the fifth. 
Ivan Malat, father David Malat, was a Yugoslav immigrant, and he was 32 at the time when he met Margaret Elizabeth, Ivan's mom. And Margaret was only 14 at the time when they met. They married two years later when Margaret was 16 and two months. And by the age of 24, Margaret had four children. Stephen was known to have a temper to be reckoned with, as everyone claimed. And Margaret was pregnant most of the time. Sadly, Stephen Malat passed away in 1983. When Ivan Malat was younger, sadly, two of his other siblings passed away. And the Malat family lived in a shack house in Moorbank, which is a suburb on the outskirts of Sydney. And the siblings were all involved in a private school and they were actually known to stir up trouble and get into mischief when classes were over. I mean, what else did you have to do back then? And this happened more so when their father had given up market gardening. Before that, they were usually helping him with his crop and they were all knew how to and were used to handling knives and guns and they were often shooting targets at home with their father's encouragement. The Malat brothers stood out to most people, unlike their sisters, because their sisters were known to be really quiet and like good girl type thing. Whereas the brothers, they were always together and a lot of people always stated that it was very intimidating trying to make friends with any of them because you couldn't just get one. It had to be all of them. It was always all of them or none of them. And so it made them seem very intimidating to other people. But out of the entire group of brothers, there was one that stood out the most to authorities at a very young age. At one point in time, the police were almost a taxi service to Ivan Malat. They would often find him walking around the streets of Liverpool when he was just excessively wagging his glasses and they would bring him home to his mum Margaret all the time after finding him like that. And most people describe this as the start to many police visits that ultimately set them apart from every other family in the area. And by the time Ivan Malat was 13 he was really more seriously on the police radar. Ivan Malat was sent to Boys Town, a home for wayward boys, and this was a result of his growing list of truant police visits and because his mum was at a wit's end with him. She applied for him to go there in late 1957 and he began in February of 1958. And this was when he was 13 and he would come home for his school holidays and his brother Bill joined him after his May holidays. Ivan Malat ultimately left Boys Town at the age of 14 and this coincided with Margaret having her 13th child in 19 years. Ivan Malat learnt some pastry baking at Boys Town and he really wanted to pursue that as a job slash career. Unfortunately, he could never get an apprenticeship anywhere because of his size and most people would make fun of him think, saying that he would fall in with the dough because he was so small. And so because he, he never went back to school, he ended up working with his father and his brother Alex at Normie Smee's concrete works in at Punch Bowl and he worked there for two weeks before finding himself in trouble. As I said, after two weeks he decided to knock off the tea money but because someone else was a suspect for this, this would be the first of many crimes Ivan Malat would get away with for many years to come. Not too long after the tea money incident, a workmate bought a gun that he had recently purchased into work to show it off to the boys which you wouldn't ever do these days but back then that was something you did. It was a pretty antique looking gun and this got Ivan's attention, it caught his attention and the bloke didn't even notice the gun missing 
When Ivan Malak got home that night, he cut the stock and barrel down to 9 inches. And then the next morning, while he and his brother Boris were driving to work, Ivan tried to show off the gun to Boris, but Boris got annoyed and threw the gun out of the window of the vehicle. And that put Ivan Malat in a really shitty mood for the rest of the day. By the time Ivan Malat had turned 16, the, the rumours and stories surrounding his list of growing crimes were more rampant than ever and that was including problems between him and his former boss. Peter Cantarella owned a fruit and veg shop in Moorbank. At first it was just 17 to 18 year old Mary Mallott working for him but it didn't take long for her to get Shirley Mallott and Ivan Mallott working for him as well. Cantarella always thought of the Malats as extremely hard working and he respected them deeply for that. And it wasn't long until he was going above and beyond for the Malats, especially Ivan. Ivan Malat really wanted a white 55 Ford. And he got screwed over by Ivan Malat majorly because he agreed to co-sign the loan, give him the loan to get the 55 Ford under the impression that Ivan or his mother wouldn't be able to get one. And he regretted doing that because it didn't take long before Ivan just stopped showing up to work altogether because he was always driving his mace and his siblings around. And Ivan Malat managed to steal Peter's firearms and his wife come with jewellery. And we all know it was Ivan Malat because he was the only logical suspect for this at that time. And that was actually confirmed by Carmel's brother Jimmy Cassata. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I'm probably not. But he confirmed it by saying that the Malat brothers had bragged to him about stealing the stuff and told him. And he convinced them to give back the firearm. But they sadly never saw Carmel's jewellery again. And... When they were bragging and telling Jimmy all this, keep in mind, the person they robbed brother, stupid, they revealed that the reason their dog didn't bark was because it knew Ivan and trusted him. And inevitably this started off a load of drama from Ivan Malat running Carmel's car off the road to the Malat driving up and down their street and screaming out abuse, they were yelling out threats about their, son, their five year old son Maurice and they were threatening to kidnap him and they were also throwing stones at their house. There were also stories about the milkman having problems with money because the money was getting stolen from the bottle. There was also rumours that Ivan Malat had bashed a guy in Liverpool over money and eventually a contact of Cantarella's informed him that Ivan Malat and some mates, we don't know if they were mates or his brothers, I'm more inclined to believe some of his brothers, actually stole a till from the local servo after they filled up their tanks and hit the attendant over the head. Cantarella didn't want to further provoke the 16 year old Ivan Malat by going to the police. He just figured that, you know what, he will grow bored of the childish antics or he will grow out of it. But that came to a head one morning when Cantarella walked out of his front door like a normal morning and went to get into his truck when he noticed that the tires had been flashed, the aerial had been broken, the wiring had been messed up, the windscreen wipers were bent backwards. And lastly, the thing that sent him over the edge was the fact that the rear brake light cables had been cut. Ivan Malat didn't even try to hide the fact that he committed the crime. In fact, he did the opposite. He was out in Liverpool boasting about it to everyone that would listen. Ivan Malat's action nearly caused his brother to lose his eye completely, like just one of them. Peter Cantarella finally had enough of the harassment that had been going on by, for quite a while at this point. So he grabbed some of his mates and they went after the Malat. 
This included running them off the road and in his blind rage he bashed the first person he could get his hands on. Sadly that wasn't Ivan and it was his younger brother Billy. So then 19 year old Boris Malat was just driving along like he normally did and until he noticed Ivan struggling with a really badly beaten Billy. It wasn't until Boris got closer that he realised that Billy's eye was actually hanging out of its socket and that his cheekbone had been badly bashed in. After they rushed Billy to the hospital, the remaining Malat's brothers decided to go after Cantarella at his shop. Luckily for him, he wasn't there, but as he was arriving, he noticed two cars full of people and he had a very strong feeling as to who it was, so he stayed in his truck and called the police, and as the police got there, the Malat fled. By the age of 17, Ivan Malat was sent to a juvenile detention centre for theft. By the age of 19, he had broken into a local store. His crime spree was never ending as it seems, even though it looked like it really died down as he got older, it had actually become worse than what anyone could have possibly ever imagined. With all of this information out there already, there is only one member of the Malat family that has spoken out against Ivan. That family member is Boris and he has actually gone on the record stating that Ivan had shown signs of psychotic behaviour before when he was really young as young as age 5. Both claimed that when Ivan was 17, he allegedly admitted to shooting a taxi driver when an armed robbery went seriously wrong. And sadly, this taxi driver went on to become paralysed from the waist down. And as a recurring theme, you would notice here, Ivan was never caught or convicted from this, for this crime. And sadly, an innocent man served five years of prison time for a crime that Ivan Malat had committed. Both actually claimed in an interview that Ivan was pretty normal up until he was 12, 14 years old. And he also claimed, I'd heard about it from his mates. They'd all boast about how they go out at night and do things with machetes. I heard he cut a dog in half with a machete while he was growing up. He was going to kill someone from the age of 10. It was built into him. I knew he was on a one-way trip. I knew it was just a matter of how long. And because Boris is the only member of the family that has spoken out against Ivan and spoken about what it was like growing up with him, his other brothers and sisters actually sent him death threats. As I mentioned before, um, these episodes will be talking about rape, and that is starting now. Um, moving forward to when Ivan Malat was 26 years old in 1971, he raped two females at Knife Point who happened to be backpacking. One of those victims was 18-year-old Margaret Patterson, who was on her way to Melbourne with a friend. However, unfortunately, in this case, because the evidence that was served by the prosecution was extremely sloppy, Ivan Malat was acquitted for this crime. And because of this, because he had already gotten away with a crime, literally, because of the prosecution, he then got way more bolder with the crimes he committed. He went on to attempt to rape and murder two more females in 1977, but again, he was never caught or convicted for this crime either. Ivan Malat had an affair with his brother Boris's wife Marilyn, and in 1971 she ended the relationship. Um, they did, however, resume their relationship after his wife Karen Duck left him in 1987, but Marilyn had been divorced from Boris for a long time at that point, 
But after a year or more of Ivan just not committing, she decided to end the relationship again. Ivan Mala and Marilyn did have a love child together as the result of an 11 year affair. Lenise um, Mala is now 54, 55 years old and everyone knew that she was Ivan's child and not Boris's. This isn't actually the only time he had a relationship with one of his brother's wives. He actually had an affair with his next youngest brother's Wally's wife Maureen, but after a little while of high tension, the brothers made up again. In 1984, when Ivan Malat was 30, he met Karen Duck, who was a teenager, and she was actually dating Ivan Malat's cousin and pregnant with his baby. However, Ivan Malat raped her, took possession of her, then married her, and when he married her, he became the stepfather of her son. Their marriage would go south in a very short amount of time, and Karen finally got the courage to leave Ivan while he was away for work. And because of this, Ivan Malat burnt her parents' home in Newcastle down. Some sources claim that it was just their garage and not their whole um, house, but there's not enough sources to actually know exactly what he burnt down, so it could be one or the other. He was said to have been a brutal husband, and when Karen left him in 1987, the pair finally got divorced in 1989 and she described him as being gun crazy while testifying against him in court and he, she said in court that he was known for his history of being violent. And that is all for today's video. This was episode 1, The Early Life of Ivan Malat. I hope you guys liked the video. Um, comment down below if you never heard of him or if you learned something new about him through this video. And keep your eyes out for the next 5 episodes. Wow, that sounds insane. That will be coming. I can't believe I am finally posting a video for or episode for the series true crimes of australia and yeah i hope you guys liked this video i hope you guys learned something from it and if there are any cases you would like me to cover true crime or missing person comment them down below and i will definitely cover them but for now that is all and don't forget if you want a cool pair of sunny i'm always gonna plug it um Go to twistedeyewear.com, they have really high quality sunglasses that are not inexpensive but not expensive either. And if you use my code SHYAMYT, that is no capital C but capital YT, you have a chance of getting $39.95 off of collected products. And here are the books that I you tell me research. I will be plugging these at the end of each of these videos. So it's Malak, Inside Australia's Biggest Manhunt by Clive Small, who was actually the head detective on this case. He is amazing the way he's written this, and it was also written by Tom Gilling. It is amazing. And there's also Sins of the Brother, the definitive story of the backpacker murders and inspiration for Captain Malak by Mark Whittaker and Les Kennedy. I highly recommend these books. There is an Amazon link down below for the bundle to get all of these for I think $41 for the both. But yeah, anyways, I hope you guys like this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!